So could you tell me what kind of errors can creep in into your uh, program? No ampersand in scanner, good. Logical, syntax, yeah. Compilation, semicolon for what? What else? Infinite loops, good. So, so if you see the first kind of errors, you have a problem and for that problem, you have an algorithm. And if the algorithm is wrong, okay, this is a logic, logical errors, logic errors, or you know, there is a problem in your uh, algorithm itself. You are trying to compute the mags, for example, but there is a problem in the logic of your algorithm. then your implementation of the logic in the programming language is accurate, but uh, it still doesn't work because there is a logic problem in your program. The second kind of uh, error is, uh, you know, so the logic is right, but uh, the realization of the logic in the program, the expression of the logic in the program is not accurate. So, uh, logic to program mapping, let's say logic to program mapping errors. Your logic is right, but in the process of translation, you ended up making uh, mistakes. So here knowledge about the programming language, like for example, uh, uh, I will give an example. So there is one particular problem. Uh, so one student was trying to work and uh, no, he, he couldn't uh, debug it. Everything is looking all right. So in one of the office hours, we sat together and tried to debug. And after 20 minutes or so, so we figured out that, you know, we, he is using uh, uh, like for example, something like in order to do uh, the power computation, in order to do power computation, he's doing something like this, a power b. Okay, something like uh, x is equal to a power b. The idea is uh, you want to compute a power b. And uh, so I looked at the code and it looked all right to me. Uh, there is a yeah, so there is a reason because uh, you know in in LaTeX, which is a one language to document the things, uh, to write documents. So we use this notation, and this notation means a power b. And while we are writing research papers, we use uh, uh, this notation quite a bit. So in my mind, I thought no, a power b is looking all right because uh, this is equal to a power b. But unfortunately, in C programming language, this is not a power b. This is uh, a exclusive word with b, I guess. Uh, that we'll come to learn about this operator a bit later, but this is not a power b. So while the program logic, and then when once we fixed this thing, immediately the program started working. So this logic to program mapping errors, uh, we should uh, avoid. These are easy to fix. But sometimes, no, like uh, they end up consuming a lot of time if you are not quite conscious. And of course, uh, no, we have syntax errors. Like semicolon missing or parenthesis, uh, no, matching parenthesis problems, etc. And uh, so under syntax errors, uh, like for example, if we have something like A is equal to B, you have to be careful because you know you may be intending a equal to equal to b, but uh, you have written a equal to b, and these two are completely different. Uh, they these two have completely different meaning, so you don't get a syntax error. This is not a syntax error. Okay, so this is logic to program mapping error. So, so this is what you wanted to do, but this is what you are doing, and this is not a syntax error, and uh, no, you would get into trouble. 
So this could be, uh, yeah. So, and then later on you will see some kind of errors called as semantic errors. And, uh, you know, like for example, an, an example of a semantic error is uh, maybe uh, scan of percent D if you use uh, A and A is of type integer, you know what scanf expects? Scanf ad expects the address of the variable as a parameter, but we are passing the value that is present in the variable as parameter. So this doesn't work as expected and we get into trouble. So maybe this could be an example of a semantic uh, error. I'm not quite sure whether this falls under semantic error or sometimes, you know, like uh, FP is a B is FB variable is a floating point variable, and you are assigning an integer to a floating point. Uh, or let's say the other way around. Let's say B is a uh, you know integer variable, and you are assigning a floating point variable to an integer, and because of that there is some loss of information, and it could be a cause of problem. So like that, when you get errors in your program, you need to pay attention. You need to understand. Uh, is this a logic error uh, or is this a logic to program mapping error or uh, no, syntax errors are of course easy because when you compile it, compiler throws out lots of errors saying semicolon missing, matching parentheses, all sorts of things, right? And then or are you doing one of the you know, semantic errors? So this understanding will help you in, uh, in focusing uh, in the debugging process, it, it helps in the debugging process. So uh, in today's class, let's revisit, uh, let's write one small program and uh, good, Pradham has this good question, how are semantic errors different from syntax errors? So we, let's hold that question, Pradam. Maybe you know when uh, an appropriate context comes up, I will uh, revisit it again. We, thank you, Pradam. So I want to, Siddiq has this nice thing. So syntax errors result in uh, compilation errors, semantic uh, errors results in unwanted results. Maybe a good way to put it, Siddiq, good. So yeah, so what is it that we are trying to do? So then now let's see, we want to read uh, int uh, num. And we are just trying to do a small experiment here so that you get a good understanding. And then I have one more thing in uh, return value. Uh, so return value is equal to scan of percent D. Great, so are you all with me on this program? It's uh so we are scanf is a function. It does two things. It, re it returns a value, and not only that, uh, the side effect is uh, uh, the memory location associated with the variable num. It will be uh, assigned some value depending upon what user entered on the keyboard. So let's see. Code D1. This is scanf dot c. Let's get rid of this. Yes. 
So, so when we gave the right number, so scanf returns the number of values it successfully read, and of course num contains thirty two. On the contrary, if I press Q, Q is scanf tries to read an integer from the keyboard buffer, but it enter, but it hits a character, uh, so so it will not be able to proceed. So what it says is, you know, the return value from scanf is zero because the number of values it is able to successfully read from the keyboard is uh, that uh, is zero. And number is some garbage value. Okay, we cannot assume. Uh, that's what I was telling yesterday. So when you don't initialize a local variable, it can be equal to any garbage value. Are you with me on these two examples, on these two simple runs of the program? So now, uh, scanf, you know, like there is a special character, uh, special control sequence called as control D. So if we press control D, control D in some sense uh, is uh, what is called as an end of file character. So when we press control D, uh, so scanf hit uh, without uh, scanf encountered what is called as an end of file character. And uh, so when it when scanf en encounters an en end of file character, it returns uh, minus one. So the end of file character, it can come in two ways. So I want you to understand this because this idea you can use in write writing many programs very cleanly. Uh, you can, uh, so this end of file character uh, it comes uh, un under two conditions. One is uh, control D. The other is when we are using, uh, you know, like for example, in the, in the last class, we have seen dot slash a dot out less than input dot text, where the input is, uh, is being read from the, the input from this file is uh, redirected to the keyboard buffer. When the input from this file is redirected to the keyboard buffer and a dot out reads from the keyboard buffer, uh, then what happens is uh, uh, when the keyboard buffer is uh, completely read, then end of file character gets, uh, uh, the program encounters the end of file character. So for example, let's see, uh, let's go back to, I want you to understand these two cases. The first case is control D. When you press control D on the explicitly from the keyboard, you get an end of file character, in which case the return value will be minus one. The second case is uh, at the prompt, when you do dot slash a dot out, less than some input dot text. So what your shell does is, in the keyboard buffer, what the shell does is all the input, so this, your a dot out doesn't know anything about you know, whether the input is coming from the keyboard or whether the input is coming from the you know, input dot text file. So there is this program because this whole command, this is one whole command, this is one whole command. This whole command is interpreted by your shell. Let's say I'm using bash shell. So I'm using bash shell. Each of you could be using different shells in Windows, it could be something else. So what happens is your bash shell takes that uh, whatever the contents of your input dot text and puts it in the keyboard buffer. Okay, this is the keyboard buffer. I'm giving an approximate picture. So, and finally, after it keeps everything from the input dot text, it, it inserts an end of file symbol. So why is that? Uh, so I want to, I'm bringing this, explaining this idea because in the last class we have seen how to write our mags uh, program. And uh, let's go back to that. So scan of mags.c. So here the way we have written mags.c is if scan of, we are trying to do a read operation and uh, uh, if what we read is not equal to, if scanf is not able to read anything from the input, we are terminated. 
a much cleaner way than this uh, a much cleaner way than this is uh, this approach so control s max eo f dot c so here i would like to see if scanf when we read uh, if this is equal to end of file so this is a much cleaner approach to write our program you keep reading input and uh, when the user if it is coming from the keyboard the user presses control d and uh, it signifies the end of uh, in uh, reading input otherwise what you do uh, if you are redirecting input from the from a text file then also it works because after the whole text file is done again you hit end of file signal so now let's compile this program and see what happens gcc you know 23 that uh scanner will return end of file when it uh, uh control d I, i don't think control d is end of file character but uh, but let's say if you press control d on the keyboard scanf returns uh, minus 1 scanf returns end of file okay, good question uh, so on the other hand let's say so i have uh, at input dot text and uh, so so here again when we do dot a dot out less than input dot text then the max value 100 is uh, obtained out so my suggestion for you the is uh, when you are trying to write code you can use this uh, you know uh, this thing effectively when we equate a variable so we studied it na sidik so we just looked at it so where is this uh, scanf dot c so scanf returns a value scanf does two things one is it uh, like for example when you then no it's simple there's nothing there so if you let's compile the program again it's scanf returns a number of values that uh, it successfully reads we looked at it in the last class also so the return value from scanf is 1 can we change the end of file character not sure was there any 100 yeah yeah so lavisha has this question so Hundred is the last. <laughs> the last time you didn't get it because uh, of this reason. Hundred is present here. I also looked for it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I pressed Control D to stop the sequence. so while discussing the ideas in the class there are two things you need to understand one is uh, uh, the computational thinking part that is how do we go about writing a program for uh, uh, like for example computing the max of a sequence uh, second is you know the c language nuances like scanf printf so my uh, i see a lot of questions uh, in this section and in the previous section section a is on uh, this nuances of scanf printf etc and these things uh, i will give you a kind of uh, you know a first level uh, most important ideas and uh, other questions that you have you should try to explore it by yourself
the reason is these are like you know like nitty gritty details and uh, they don't have much conceptual value except that c language chose to do these things in this particular fashion and uh, you should try to explore do some experiments and try to explore what this means that's uh, do you understand i mean getting getting to this computational thinking is important and c language is a particular way to express you know map our uh, algorithms to programs which can run on uh, computers and uh, c language has lots of nuances and uh, uh, it's not possible for us to discuss all these nuances in a classroom setting because number one they are boring number two you know we just have to look and understand what uh, they mean all right so there are few questions i think i will uh, uh, we can discuss it maybe at a different uh, time uh, because they are not uh, that important uh, conceptually that important that's why i am just leaving them there uh, all right so let's so let's get going so now more important ideas i don't mean your questions are not interesting but there are more interesting ideas to discuss so if you spend lot of time on this then we, we don't make much progress all right so now uh, how many of you now are able to do prime number thing or, or is there anyone who is not able to write code for prime numbers and stuff the to, to that to the problem that uh, how do we given a number we want to compute whether it is prime or not everyone is able to do it okay. i think definitely around i could see 70 to 80% are able to do so now what we will do is uh, so we take this max.c program and uh, and we will uh, so we, we we look at uh, now we enter in the for the rest of the lecture so we see how we can uh, uh, we will look at this new ideas this loops how we can use loops so that uh, uh, we can uh, write uh, much code in a much structured manner right so if you see the problem if you see the code for this max what's the problem in the code for this max is there any problem in the code for this max what's the problem navisha says there is a problem so the, so logically speaking if you don't enter a number the max is containing a garbage hari <laughs> good one navisha so yeah so if you don't enter a number we end up printing a garbage value on line number 28 this is very good catch that is uh, if the sequence is uh, uh, if the sequence is empty we should uh, print no saying the sequence is uh, uh, empty that uh, but instead we are printing some max how can we solve that problem let's fix that problem before we go further if the sequence is empty then we are still uh, so this is what lavisha pointed out very good catch i'm very happy 
I press it control D and maximum value is uh, some garbage. Yes, Shreyans got it. So all we have to do is, uh, you know, uh, on line number 13, we are checking for scanf and if it didn't go through for the first time, then our init flag would be, if init flag is equal to, if it's not equal to, if it is equal to one, then uh, we say uh, printf sequence empty else all and document great now we are good right so let's compile this program now it says sequence empty excellent thank you ravisha So, okay. So, is there any other problem in this code apart from this? So, logically speaking, there are no errors in this code, but the problem is the readability of this code is pretty bad. So, you have go to statement on line 14, you have go to statement on line 28. So, you have to trace what happens. Hey, you know what? On line 13, this happens. If this is not, uh, if this condition doesn't hold, then you go to the end. Otherwise, you keep executing. And then again, you go back to L1. Uh, no, on line 28, you have a go-to statement back to L1. All this is a pain. So now, is it possible for us to rewrite this code? The code is lengthy. It takes a it doesn't take a lot of time. In terms of execution performance, it's not an issue. But in terms of code readability, it's a problem. And of course, code length also increases for sure. So now we want to write this code in a nicer fashion. Okay. But one thing that I want you to understand is just by with having this go-to statement, you, you can do a, pretty much everything that, uh, uh, no? All, all programs you should be able to write just with the ideas that you have learned so far in the course. But possibly, if you learn arrays, then uh, you can do a lot more things. Anyways, so we will uh, talk about arrays in the Monday class. In today's class, we would like to talk about loops. So the first idea is about uh, what is called as a while loop. Let me close this. Let's see. So here you can see, uh, so this is the simplest thing. So here you have the while loop. So you can see the while loop evaluates the text expression before every loop. Uh, so it can execute zero times if the condition is initially false. Uh, it requires the parenthesis like the if statement. So what does the while loop looks like? The while loop is like this. Uh, if you want to draw a flow chart for this, if you want to draw a flow chart for this, so you, ex you have this expression. So there is this expression uh, that is here. Let's call it as, uh, so, so there is this expression. So you have EXPR has a shorthand. And um, so, and then what happens is you check if the expression, let me, let me write it this way. So, so, you know, you evaluate this expression. If this expression is equal to zero, if this is equal to zero, then uh, let me, then it means it is for actually, let me do. So there are two possibilities for this. So true and false. So if it is true, if this expression is true, then you go ahead and execute uh, the body of this statement, body of the while loop, body of while loop. The body of while loop it can be a compound statement 
with uh, or a block statement. Uh, compound or block statement means you have this left and right parent, left and right flower brackets and multiple statements with it. Body of while statement. And then after you execute the body of the while statement, so what happens is uh, you know you go back, you go back to the beginning. You go back to the beginning. The body of the while statement you execute, you go back to the beginning. And if it is false, if it is false, uh, if this expression is false, then you skip the body of the while statement and you go to the statement which is immediately after the while loop. So let's say the statement after the while loop, let's uh, call it as uh, uh, statement uh, uh, next, statement next. So the control goes to statement next. All right, are you with me here? So, so what does this expression evaluating to true or false means? So, you know, in C programming language, if this expression evaluates to a non-zero value, it is true. And if it evaluates to a zero value, it is false. Do you understand the semantics? So the control enters this while loop here, this expression gets this evaluated. And if it evaluates to a non-zero value, the body of the statement will be executed and control will go back to the uh, expression state, to, to again to the beginning of the while loop. On the contrary, if expression evaluates to zero, then control goes to the next statement uh, that is there after the while. Are you with me here? The flowchart is not clean, but I hope you get the idea. Are you all with me? Good. Now let's try to rewrite this code using this uh, approach. How can we rewrite this code? Now we don't want, uh, no? uh, yeah, so maybe I don't want this. So, so while scanf is not equal to end of file, while scanf is not equal to end of file. So what do we do? So the code, uh, we want to do a whole bunch of things. Let's uh, format the code. while max Let's format document. So now can you see what is happening here in the while loop? What is the body of the while loop? The body of the while loop starts from line number 10 to line number 21, the body of the while loop. So on line number eight, we read a number and if it is not an end of file symbol, then we enter the while loop. And then the, the stuff is usual and uh, if that is the first number that we are reading, then our current estimate of the max will be that uh, number. And on the contrary, if the if that's not the first number that we are reading, we compare the current number with the existing uh, estimate of max. And if it is greater, then we say max is equal to current number on line eight. Does this code make sense? You're all with me here. And let's say once we reach the end of file on line number eight, uh, so you the condition turns out to be false and you come out of the while loop.
Very good. Is there anyone who has a problem in understanding this code? Shreyans has this question. <laughs> if you enter a character, actually, you should try it or two. So if you enter a character, character uh, scanf will return zero. And uh, you enter a, yeah, let's, so this is the challenge problem for you. Challenge problem for you is, uh, I want you to come up with an explanation. Good question. Very good question, Shreyansh. The question is, uh, in this code, let's say for this program, if you enter like uh, numbers like 10, 20, minus 1, 40, and the character A, then what happens? So then what happens to the program? And uh, what happens to the program? And why such behavior? Explain the behavior. Are you with me? This is a challenge problem. And then, so Pradham has this suggestion, instead of using this uh, not equal to end of file, this we can use equal to equal to one. Then, uh, then the program behaves in a different way. And why does it behave uh, in that? So this is the challenge problem. I want you to explain the behavior of the program. So challenge problem. I want you to, the, the stuff for this is already explained. Uh, so you don't need to answer now. I want you to consider case uh, two cases. Case one is uh, the condition that we check is not equal to end of file and case two is uh, if it is equal to uh, one, this is the, what happens in these two cases. And uh, the input sequence that we have is this. So 10, 20, how the, the program behaves, uh, how the program behaves uh, for this input uh, sequence and why it behaves in that fashion. So actually I have one more thing that if you can make a video of you know, answer for this, and if you send it to me and if it looks good, I will post it on the class uh, uh, course website. Sounds exciting. So give it a shot, it will be fun. Don't guess, I want you to think properly. There is nice, you need to understand a bit uh, deeper on what happens underneath. Are you all with me on this challenge problem? You understood the challenge problem? Okay, good. So for the time being, we will stick to this code. Do you, is there anyone who has problem with this code? You're all good, right? So now let's compile this code. So GCC, max.c, I should not have changed this code. I should have while max, okay, good, good. While max.c, 234, minus one, control D. Good, so it's working. Or we can take this and then say less than input dot text, it's working. So now you have seen while loop, whatever you can do using while loop, you can do using go to statement. The only advantage that you get using while loop is, you know, this is uh, the code is very, very clean. Isn't the code clean? You just have a nice. And one important thing I want to understand is uh, here, this whole if statement, you know, this is one single statement. This whole thing is one single statement. One single statement. So since there is, it is one single statement, uh, you can actually remove this, uh, no? while this is not advisable, you can remove e even this also. Because when there is only one statement in the body of the loop, you can just have that, uh, you don't need to use, left and right flower brackets. 
So it, this code perfectly compiles. If I do this, if this com perfectly compiles, because the whole if statement is only one uh, uh, one statement. Are you with me here? That why we don't need a flower bracket in this case, technically speaking, although it's a good idea to have flower bracket here, but we don't need the flower bracket because the whole if statement is uh, one single statement. So the next construct that I would uh, like to introduce is uh, there is a, some other construct called as a do while statement. So do while statement is exactly equal to the while loop, except that what happens is, you know, like, let me see if I can draw a better uh, diagram for this. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the statement. Let me use, uh, okay, this is the statement and then uh, control enters uh, the statement first and then the expression gets evaluated and then the expression gets evaluated and if this expression is true, if this expression is true, the so true means it's not equal to zero. True means the expression value is not equal to zero. And if it is false, false means the expression value is equal to zero. Okay. So yeah, I don't want to actually use this notation. So because it uh, confuses you. So this is if expression evaluates to non-zero, then you go back to the beginning of the, no, execute the statement again. Otherwise, if it is false, you go to the next statement. You go to statement next. Do you understand the logic here? Are you with me? Are you happy with this? Okay, good. So now let me explain one more uh, uh, construct that is uh, before we, uh, uh, the for statement. The for loop, uh, it is very interesting. So there is this initialization code and there is this continuation and there is this uh, action and statement. So the way the for loop works uh, so here, so let me draw the picture here. So, so there is this init code. There is this init initialization. I am just using init for the shorthand. And then there is continuation. And let me use cont as a shorthand for uh, this cont. Uh, and then there are two things here. If it is uh, false. False means zero and uh, true. And then true. If this is true, the statement will be executed. Whatever the, the body of the for loop will be executed. And then after the body of the for loop gets executed, whatever the action that is present here, you know, that gets executed. So this is action. And uh, you go here, you go here, you go here. So this pretty much this action and statement, no, this action is not like, uh, it's like appending this action at the end of the statement. You can think of it even that way. And then after, if it is false, whatever the statement after uh, uh, state, statement next, after the, after the uh, for loop gets executed, this is what happens. So this looks a bit complicated, but it is not really the case. Essentially, before this for loop gets executed, this init code will be executed, and then uh, you this condition will con this con this condition will be evaluated. If it is false, you don't uh, you come out of the for loop and you go go and execute the control transfers to the statement after the for loop, 
and uh, otherwise the statement gets executed and if the condition is true the statement gets executed before you go and evaluate this uh, condition again you execute this action so let's try to do uh, solve this uh, you no know, use this uh, for loop and try to solve the problem this sum n dot c problem so this is the problem that we have seen where we take an n and try to find the sum of first n numbers control a control c control n so how do we do this so here is it's very simple so we will write uh, this is our for loop so what is initialization so we would like to make uh, i is equal to 1 and sum is equal to 0 you can see you can have multiple statements here we can have multiple statements uh, here so there are three parts and uh, you would like to keep continuing as long as i is uh, greater than n and uh, at the end of uh, this we do and then here in the code we say sum is equal to sum plus is equal to that's it now can you see so when you enter this uh, this for loop you initialize i is equal to 1 and the sum is equal to 0 and you check if i is greater than or is greater than n if the condition is true you go and execute the body of the for loop in the body there is only one statement sum oh okay yeah thank you i less than or equal to so we check if i is less than or equal to n and uh, if it is true you go to the body and then you accumulate the value of i in the sum and after this accumulation happens so you should execute the plus plus i will be executed before i less than or equal to uh, yeah plus plus by i plus plus they don't make any difference so i would like to say one thing so this above code is equivalent to this so even if we have something like plus plus i and not have this Uh, so both are equivalent this code from line to 11 to 13 and line 16 to 19 are the same what is sum plus i sum plus equal to i what are you doing in the last class sum plus i is equal to this is equivalent to sum is equal to sum plus i It's a shorthand notation. And this is equivalent to, so you can even have i is equal to zero, sum is equal to zero, and uh, you can even uh, eliminate this. This is also fine. So the initialization condition, so the initialization condition that is coming here, uh, you know, that is coming here. we are writing it here this is the init so this is the init and and then the final concluding thing in order to go to before we go to the next iteration what we should do this action before we go to which is which should come at the end we are putting it here so but this nicely summarizes what is our intent but not this because in this code you know this uh, statement 16 and 17 are decoupled from this for statement are you with me here that in the second case this code this whole code from line 16 to 21 and line 11 to 13 they are equivalent to each other but uh, from line 11 to 13 the whole thing is nicely coupled and we are able to see you know like before we enter the for loop this is what i should do and in every iteration of the for loop this is the condition we should check 
and at the end of every iteration i should increment the variable i by 1 this whole thing is nicely coming out in the code from line 11 to 13 but it is not the case from uh, in the code from uh, line 16 to 21 where 16 and 17 lines are decoupled from the for loop and similarly this plus plus i it has become a body of the for loop so when you are trying to read someone else's code so when you look at the second code is does it make more sense or the code from line 11 to 13 more makes more sense So line 11 to 13 make more sense, right? So you can clearly see what is the init condition, what is the condition to continue the code, uh, not to continue the for loop, and what should we do at the end of each iteration. Great. So the value of i remains the same, whatever the value of i, uh, that is there, it will remain after we come out of the for loop. That's what the expression is. Okay, now let's compile this. Now we don't even need this, no? this end and all this. Uh, so GCC sum in for So that's it. Are you all with me here on this program? How for loop works? And actually here we don't need uh, this, no? This parent, this left and right flower bracket is not required because there is only one statement. You know, see one simple statement is necessary, is sufficient enough to get do our job. So because of that, we don't need it. But on the contrary, if we want to compute sum of squared numbers also, so let's say if we have something like uh, uh, int sum sqr, then this is what we can do. Sum is equal to 0. Sum sqr is equal to 0. And then we will say sum now we need, uh, no, there are two statements. So because of this, we need. So don't use this, no, it's better to use the whole addition. Don't use shortcuts. So what is the problem? So why I didn't write this one? So I have, I got a doubt here. Can you tell me what is the doubt I got when I uh, what is the doubt I got when I wrote this statement on line fourteen? What is the yeah? There is a precedence question. Uh, so there are two ways of uh, interpreting it. One is you know you first compute i star i and add it to some square. Or uh, the other way is maybe you do, you add i to some square and multiply it uh, with i. You understand the precedence issue? So I got that doubt and I don't know the answer for it. So one way is check the book, other way is you know, write it in a way uh, where you know for sure what is going to happen. Are you with me here? It's okay, it may work. I, I guess it would work, but I want to make a point here but there is a precedence issue here. That is, uh, you may end up adding i to sum, some square, and then multiply some square with i, and it, it may not work. Uh, so I got that doubt, so I changed my code to this, where I'm perfectly fine about, uh, confident about the code I have written, the value of the semantics of the code I have written. There is a question, can we use a while loop instead of for? These are all interchangeable. There is no doubt you can interchange a, a so like for example, all this code. So what is the equivalent while statement for all this thing? So let me do this. So, so all these, whichever is convenient for you, 
you can do like so here i we can do something like this while you I'll continue my class till 11.15 guys. I hope you don't mind it. So if you see line 18 to, why is this uh, an error here? Expected A. Oh, okay. So this while loop is equivalent to the line 18 to 27 is equivalent to line 11 to 16. Does it make sense why while loop is true? Are you with me here? So all these things are interchangeable. So you just have to figure out uh, know, what is uh, the right structure to use in terms of code readability and other issues. Because in this loop, again, lines 18 to 20, which they are, you know, uh, they are kind of not uh, bound to the while uh, statement. So if someone is reading the code, then uh, this is not quite apparent, but the for loop is very clear that what we are doing in the whole structure. No, not i is equal to plus plus i. Plus plus i just increments i. So you don't need that. So stay on, you don't need it. Plus plus i, just read about it. Plus plus i just increments the variable i. So now we will conclude this today's lecture by writing the code for the primality testing problem. I will just uh, comment this code out. Good. Here. Nice. Yeah. So here enter n. So we want to check whether the number is prime or not. Let me take the most simplest strategy. You may complain about it, but let me, I'll use uh, a very simple strategy. So check if, uh, from i is equal to 2. So don't pounce on me. But uh, any factor, we say that n is a prime number if it doesn't have any factor. And all factors of n, they are uh, less than n. All factors, we say n is a prime uh, if it is divisible by any number uh, apart from 1 and n. Right? It's okay, we can use n by 2 and all that, but let's take a simplistic approach. And uh, so what do we do? Yeah. So if n percent uh, i is equal to 0, what do we do? We say printf. Factor will say percent B is a factor of percent D slash N I followed B. Does this code work? So GCC prime dot C, let's say, yeah, say 2 is a factor of 10, 5 is a factor of 10, let's say I'll get 11, we don't get any. But let's say we want to do something here. Uh, so as soon as we see a factor, uh, we don't want to print the factor and all. All we want to do is we want to uh, no, flag it as a composite number and, uh, and we would like to uh, 
Yeah, so let's, uh, we want to flag it as a composite number. And uh, so, so what we do here is we will say we use a, so initially we assume that every number is a prime number. So we assume that every number is a prime number. So until we find a factor for it. So once we find a, that, that a factor for it, we make it into a non-prime number. We say prime is equal to zero. And not only that, we don't want to continue the loop. So we use a statement called as a break statement. What the break statement will do is, uh, you know, as uh, in the, it finds the closest enclosing loop, here in this case, it is the for statement, and uh, we come out of that loop immediately. We come out of the loop immediately. So here, so if we come out of the, once it's, we know it's uh, find a factor, we break from the loop and come out. Wherever we are, we just break from the loop and come out. And at the end, we check if prime is equal to one. If that is the case, we say printf n is, uh, Otherwise, we say n is percent b. Are you all with me on the code that I am writing? So let me compile the program again. GCC prime dot c twelve. So I let's have. You see, 13 is prime. Are you all with me on the code? Does the code make sense? Try two also. Huh? Special case for one. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, if you enter one, then we should uh, do something about it. <laughs> okay, so you may have to uh, immediately say here. So what should we print? I get one. Yeah, so what should we do? So we should, we are printing get your math right. And uh, so what we should do is we should exit from the program. We don't need to continue. So it's, it's a good. We put what is called as an exit. We don't know, break doesn't work here, guys. So if n is equal to one, you should exit from the program. Break will break from the loop. This break will, it finds the enclosing loop and breaks from it. Don't worry about zero. That is a kind of what is called as a return code, but exit will exit from the program itself. You will understand the difference between exit and uh, return later. Uh, does exit, uh, no, both the exit one, exit zero are the same. Exit one, that one and zero is what is called as a return code from the program. Uh, not sure what number it is uh, can be. Ah, okay. We have to use stdlib.h, it looks like. Oh, 
now you exit from the program immediately. Oops. Two is a prime number, right? Oh, so what happens? Oh, so two is a prime number, so it, it is showing two as a composite. Huh? Okay. I don't like this word, Jude. Let me put this. So what should we do for two? If it is two, we will just uh, print it as a prime and uh, yeah, let me. Oh, okay, we made prime to be, if n is equal to, if n is equal, ah, okay, now it works right, actually. So it should, I don't need it. That's true. If, uh, because we, we check if it is, uh, i is equal to two, yeah, it, it goes, it doesn't go into the loop. Good, good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you are good. So, okay, so now can we run this code? Are you all with me on this code? Can we run this code by using GDB once and conclude this lecture? Last five minutes, we will run this code for one and we will run this code for one prime number and one composite number and then we will conclude today's lecture. So it will take five minutes and then we will conclude. So GCC minus G uh, prime dot C GDB. For the time being, exit means exit from the program. That's all you need to know. We will think about uh, it later. GDB A dot out. So I use shorthand B for uh, break main. EUI enable. Run. So next, 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 next. You will see when printf is there, printf uh, is not printed on the, the screen. There is a reason for it. I will point you to one video lecture from section A. Please watch that video lecture over this weekend. And uh, so what's the value of, so now let's say we enter one here. When we enter one, we go to line number 11. What happens on line number 11? Control print C, the value of n is 1. So what happens on line number 11? So uh, we go to line 12, the condition is true. So we go to line 12. So we print, uh, uh, no. So when you try to print here some, uh, no, it doesn't, Some sometimes the output gets mangled. Uh, so don't worry about it, but you understood, no, that uh, get your math right got printed. And then after that, when we press enter, you exit from the program. Are you with me here? That what happened when n, n is equal to 1? Are you all with me? Right? So now let's run this program again. So run. And uh, let's say uh, we use 4. Sorry, sorry. No, no. Use next. And uh, I'm entering the value of n uh, as 3. So n is equal to 3. So the condition is false. So now i is equal to 2. We check the condition if 3 percent 2 is equal to 0. Uh, no. And then uh, so now if you see at the beginning of the loop, uh, so what's the value of i is equal to 2 and the value of i is equal to 3. And uh, so now what happened is, uh, you know, i got incremented. So, and then uh, next, yeah, you you come out of the loop and you check if it is equal to prime. Yeah, it is equal prime, but it gets printed and you come out. Great. Right? 
so again uh, run the program so if you run the program uh, yeah so there is this question nachiket has why is the breakpoint on line number 5 because on line number 6 we are initializing prime to equal to 1 so because of that reason that needs to be executed when uh, We are just not saying prime is a you know, integer variable. We are telling compiler to initialize prime is equal to one at the beginning of the program. And because of that, uh, line number six needs to be executed. So after line number six, do we go to line number seven or line number nine? Yeah, so we go to line number nine here. Yeah. Okay. And then again, we do it. So the value may be I can enter the value of uh, n is equal to 2 and uh, so keep so i is equal to 2 you don't go out printf nice so i want you to i will uh, post this code today and uh, i want you to run through this uh, no use gdb run through this code and understand how it is working and uh, yeah, uh, the other thing is while using TUI, you have to use control L sometimes. And uh, there is one more thing that I want you to pay attention to. It's a bit of weird thing. Uh, and I want you to understand uh, it's, uh, I've, I'll point you to one video lecture where I talked about it in detail on this. So when we press uh, go, when we say execute next, printf got executed, but enter n is not printed on the screen. Do you see this? Do you know why it is the case? Or is it discussed? Jia will discuss this in the class. Do you, you, you understood the problem, right? Printf got executed, but enter n is not printed on the screen. You notice that this is a problem, right? It's a problem, no? So why is this happening? So it's it's a important uh, uh, idea. There is uh, so here one thing again I would like to say is uh, the reason why this is not happening. This is all kind of C language nuances, but computationally speaking, uh, all we are doing is we are printing and reading. That's all. But there are certain C language nuances that will creep in as we go through this course and we will study them. Okay, so for whatever work it is. Because it helps us understand how the interface between the programming language and operating system works. And um, yeah, so it would be a fun thing to learn. So you're all happy with. Uh, yeah, last time buddy also didn't get printed. I am not sure what happened to that. We will see anyway. So are you all happy with today's lecture? Yeah, so whenever there is a problem in TUI, use control L. Sometimes uh, TUI uh, shows the same lecture, same uh, screen gets messed up. Whenever that happens, do control uh, L. Okay, control L. Okay, shall we conclude the lecture here? I hope you're all with me today. Do you understand the ideas from today's lecture?